In this video, we are going to look at some questions from section A of mathematics paper 2. For the year 2017, this was written by the internal. Now, let's look at the first question here. Given that the matrix M has the elements 3, negative 2, 5 and X, find the value of X for which the determinant of M is 22. So let us write uh, this matrix M. So the first uh, step that we, we should do is we are going to identify the elements that are forming the media diagonal. So from the matrix given here, we can see 3 and uh, X are forming what we call major diagonal. After we identify the major diagonal, we move on to look at the minor diagonal so from the minor diagonal we can see that we have the entries five and negative two then let's now look at uh, how do we find uh, the determinant so the determinant you need to find the product of the elements from the major diagonal so in our case we are going to multiply three and x so we have 3 times x, then you subtract the product of the elements from the minor diagonal. So in our case, we have 5 times negative 2. Now, where this determinant, we substitute with 22 since we are given. So we have 22 is equal to 3 times x is 3x minus 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. From there, we can now multiply the negative with the negative. So negative times negative 10, we get positive 10. From there, we can now collect the like terms. So 22 and 10 are like terms. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, shift the 10 to the other side. So if we shift the 10 to the other side, it will change from positive to negative at 10, giving us here 3x. Then we can see that we are going to subtract 22 minus 10 will give us a 12, 3x over 3 over 3. Therefore, x is equal to 3 into 12 is 4. That, so that is the value of x then now let us write our original matrix so our original matrix we have 3 negative 2 5 and 4 here now from there we need to find row number 2 the inverse of matrix m so the inverse we are going to have m raised to the power negative 1 is equal to 1 over determinant multiplied by the adjoint of matrix M. Now let's find the, the adjoint of matrix M. So for the major diagonal, for the major diagonal, you just have to interchange the position. So the 3 will go on position where there is 4, then the 4 will go on the position where there is uh, 3. So that's the pattern. We have 4, 3 here, but do not change the signs. So do not change the signs to the number from the major diagonal. Then from the minor diagonal, you don't, do not change the position. Only what you have to do is you just have to change the signs. So we can see that the original matrix has a negative 2. So in our joint, we are going to put positive 2. Then from this original matrix, we can see we have positive 5. Then here we are going to have negative 5. So our final answer is 1 over the determinant. We have it is 22 multiplied by the adjoint. We have it. So times 4, negative 5, 2, 3. So this is our final answer. Now we move on to question 1a. Um, a survey was carried out at Kamlima Farming Block showed that 44 farmers planted maize, 32 planted sweet potatoes, 
37 farmers are planted cassava, 14 planted both maize and sweet potatoes, 24 planted both sweet potatoes and cassava, 20 planted both maize and cassava, 9 planted all the three crops and 6 did not plant any of these crops. Now Roman number 1 illustrate this information on a Venn diagram. So the first step that you are supposed to do is you need to draw a rectangle. So this is a rectangle. Now from uh, this rectangle we need to determine how many sets are we going to have under this rectangle. Now this rectangle represents the Venn diagram. Then the other thing a Venn diagram is just like the entire or universal. So whatever that we have should be written inside of this uh, rectangle. Now, let's look at uh, how many uh, sets are we going to have. So we can see that uh, we have three types of uh, crops. So there was maize, uh, sweet potato, and uh, cassava. So since we have uh, these three uh, crops, we are going to have three sets. Then from there, the most important that you need to check before you draw the three sets is you need to look at uh, is it, uh, are we going to have the intersection of the all three sets. Now from the point that nine planted all the three crops we can see that we are going to have the intersection of all the three sets. So you need to make sure that as you are drawing the three circles, they need to intersect at one point. So let's draw now the three sets. So this is our, we'll call this one as a maze. So we have this one as our maze. Then we have the second one, we we'll consider this one as uh, sweet potato Then we need to have another set So this will be our cassava So we can see that we have this region the one I've shaded this indi indicates the intersection of all the three now after you are done drawing the three circles we need to look at uh, first we'll begin with the uh, those that did all the three uh, crops so in our case we can see that uh, nine planted all the three crops so this is what we are going to indicate so we put nine here so we have written the first one then after you've indicated uh, those that did the three you move on to now those that planted D2. So let's now begin from 14 here. So we have been told 14 planted both maize and uh, sweet potatoes. So we want the intersection between maize and uh, sweet potatoes. So maize and sweet potatoes, we are told we have 14. So 14 did maize and sweet potatoes now from that 14 we can see that uh, we have nine so this nine is uh, found in uh, those that did the three uh, activities and also this nine should be part of those that did it too so for us to find the number that we are going to put here we are going to subtract nine from 14 so uh, 14 minus uh, nine we have 5 here so that we can say if we add 5 plus 9 we still have 14 the intersection of maize and sweet potatoes now we move on to the second one from there we can see that 24 planted both sweet potatoes and cassava so the intersection of the intersection of sweet potatoes and cassava was 24 now from this 24 we have 9 already so when indicating the the number of those that did 2 you the pattern is you subtract the intersection of all the three uh, sets so from 
24 we are going to subtract 9 so 24 minus 9 we have 15 so this 15 will be written between uh, sweet potatoes and cassava so you write the 15 here okay so now we can move on to the other one so the other point is 20 planted both maize and cassava so this is this time is we are looking at uh, maize and cassava now from that uh, uh, 20 we already have uh, 9 so we subtract uh, 20 minus 9 here we are going to have uh, 11 now after we are done indicating those that did the 3 and the 2 uh, activities now we can go back to the first number so let's look at uh, 44 so 44 farmers planted maize so now from that 44, there are those that did 3 and there are, there are those that did 2. So let's see if we can draw the circle for maize. Now from this maize, we can see that 5 is part of maize, 9 is part of maize, 11 is part of maize. So what we are going to do is we need to add these three numbers. So uh, 11 plus 9 is 20 plus 5 that is 25 so if we subtract 25 from 44 we are going to have 19 so that if we add 19 this and this we still get 44 so that 19 should be written here so this is the, the pattern that you need to have in mind now let's move on to the other number 32 planted sweet potatoes Okay, so now let's look at uh, the set for sweet potatoes. So from the sweet potatoes, we have 5, 9, and 15. So let's add uh, 5 plus 15 is 20, plus 9, that is 29. So if we subtract 29 from 32, we get 3. So we need to have... A three here okay so let's also do the same for the other party so for the other party we will look at 37 planted cassava now from that cassava party let's look at what we have so from the cassava we have 11 we have 9 is also part of cassava 15 is also part of cassava then let's uh, find the sum 11 plus 11 plus 9 is 20 plus 15 that is 35 35 if we take 35 from 37 we have 2 so here we are going to have 2 so we have done the first party now the remaining part is we need to check if we have been given the number of those that did not participate in this farming activity so the last point here we can see that six did not plant any of these crops so the six should be any any uh, party uh, except from this set so we can write it here so we have done the first question we have illustrated uh, this information on a given uh, diagram now let's move on to question roman number two how many farmers question a were at this farming block so for this question we just want the total including those that did not plant even if they did not plant the point is they were farmers so let's add we have 19 plus 11 plus 5 plus 15 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 so let's find the total so 19 plus 11 plus 2 plus 9 plus 5 plus 15 plus 3 
plus C six. So I'm getting the total of 70 farmers. So this means that the total number of farmers that were at this farming block was 70 farmers. Now let's move on to question B. Now question B here, we want those that planted maize only. Only maize, they didn't plant any other uh, crop. Okay, so let's look at it from maize. We have this five. So this five is part of maize and sweet potato, so it's not uh, included. This nine is part of maize, sweet potato, and cassava, so it's not the answer. This eleven is part of uh, maize and cassava, so it's not our answer. Then uh, this nineteen, we can see that this nineteen is only found in maize, so this is our answer uh, for this question. So we have nineteen. Uh, uh, farmers okay now let's look at uh, for the uh, last one planted two different crops so planted two different uh, crops now here those that uh, just planted two different crops will begin with the uh, five five we can see that five did maize and sweet potato then 15 did sweet potato and cassava 11 did maize and uh, cassava so these are the numbers that we we want here so we'll say 5 plus 15 plus 11 so 5 plus 15 is 20 plus 11 that is 31 now 31 plus 9 we have 40 so our answer is 40 now let me uh, explain so even 9 will be part of our answer why we are just told planted two different crops there is no condition of only so since there is no this condition of only even 9 9 can be considered so if there is no condition of only the the intersection of the three sets can be uh, also considered only on the two uh, parts so that is our point there okay so now we we have another question question 2a so a box of chalk contains five white four blue and three yellow pieces of chalk a piece of chalk is selected at random from the box and not replaced. A second piece of chalk is then selected. Draw a tree diagram to show all the possible outcomes. So, now let's look at the outcomes that we have. So, we have three outcomes. There is the white, uh, blue, then we have also the yellow. Now, since we have three outcomes, our tree diagram will consist of will consist of three uh, branches. So we have one, two, then three here. So we we'll consider this as our first peak or first selection now we'll consider the first one we have white then in the second one we have blue then in the third one we have yellow now after we are done with the, the first selection since we are told two pieces of chalk were selected so we have done the first selection so this branch will also form three more branches so that's a pattern so that is the pattern that you need to have in mind so we have white 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 then you have blue 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 
then we have yellow yellow the yellow now let's look at the first step so we'll look at the number of each color so white we have five blue four yellow three so let's find the total five plus four is nine plus three twelve so the total were 12 uh, pieces of chalk now let's see if uh, find the probability so the probability of picking white is 5 over 12 so from the first party you don't do the substitution you just have to write uh, the actual probability so the probability of picking white is 5 over 12 then for blue is 4 over 12 uh, yellow it's 3 over uh, 12 now from there we need to look at uh, the condition that we are given so we are told the uh, piece of chalk was selected without replacement so since we it was not replaced we need to make some substitution now here we don't know the one that was picked so the first branching will consider that the one picked was white so if we uh, pick white without replacement this indicates that the remaining white color we have four four white remaining plus four the actual for blue and three so if we add four plus four is eight plus three we can see that we are getting 11 so here we are going to have four over 11. now remember we are assuming that white was picked so blue is still intact so it's still 4 over the total is affected is still 11 then yellow is still intact 3 over 11 okay so now let's assume what was picked was blue instead of white then if we subtract 1 from blue we have 3 over 11 then for yellow we have 3 over 11 for white we we'll have 5 over 11. now the last one you assume that it was yellow pink but not white and blue so yellow we are going to have 2 over 11 blue 4 over 11. so we have 4 over 11 then white we have 5 over 11 so you can see the pattern here so the pattern is from this branch here the one affected is white then from this branch here the one affected is blue then from this branch here the one affected is yellow so that's a pattern so then if you affect white blue and yellow it remains the same if you affect blue uh, the other two colors that should not uh, change so with the first question here of writing a tree diagram we are done but let's just show now the possible outcome so this one will give us the z w w so we can see that we are going to have uh, white white then here we have white blue this one here we have white yellow then this one we have blue white then this one this one we have blue blue so that's a pattern here we are going to have blue yellow then here we have white white here yellow blue here we have yellow yellow okay now after we are done we will have the question of rama number two find the probability of selecting pieces of chalk of the same color so here we want of the same color so of the same color we can see here we have ww plus this one plus this one so whenever you are trying to find the probability of selecting uh, 
whatever that you are talking about of the same color you choose where they are same letter so probit was saying same color is equal to the first one white white plus blue blue plus yellow yellow so let's do substitution uh white white we have this number times it, this number so it's 5 over 12 times 4 over 11 plus e, blue blue it's this number and this number so the original and the affected so this will give us 4 over 12 times 3 over 11 plus e, the other one we have this and this so it's the original and the affected so 3 over 12 times e, 2 over 11 okay so then now we can multiply uh, 5 times e, 4 we have 20 over if we multiply 12 times 11 we get 132 plus even here 4 times 3 it's 12 over 132 plus 3 times 2 is 6 over 132. So there is no need of finding the lowest common denominator. We can see that here we have 32, I mean 132 even here, 132. So we can just add the numerator. So 20 plus 12 is 32 plus 6. This will give us. 38 over 132 so we can uh, divide the we can reduce it so 38 we can say divided by let's use 2 we have 19 here over then if we get 132 divided by 2 you get 66 so this is our final answer Okay, now we can move on to question 2b. In the diagram below, OP is equal to vector 2P, OQ, 4Q, and the ratio PX to XQ is equal to 1 to 2. So we have this diagram where we have the vector OP, uh, which is 2P, OQ, we have 4 uh, Q. Now let's indicate the ratios that we have. The first ratio we can see that here, our PX uh, correspond with one here. So from P to X means that we have a one. Then XQ, XQ it has a two. So from X to Q here, we have the ratio of two. Now, if we are to find the total ratio from P to Q, it's uh, 3. Now, let's look at uh, the first uh, vector. We want the vector P, Q. So, we want to move from P uh, to Q. So, we want to move with this one. Now, we can see that uh, we move this root since we have the vector here. Even here, we have the vector. So, that is what we are going in to use so vector pq is equal to vector po plus e o q now the vector op is 2p now what is po so po we are moving against the direction so we want the reverse of 2p so you just introduce the negative sign so this becomes negative 2p then for o q we get the positive since we are moving uh, uh, uh we are moving toward the arrow so this should be vector 4 q then what we are going to do is we will write the positive one the first then minus 2p so that is our answer now let's look at uh, p x so for p x p x from p to x so we can see that we just want a certain portion of 
uh, P, Q, we have the vector for P, Q. So let's look at what number is on vector on between P and X. So we can see that we have 1 over what is the total number of ratios from P up to Q? It's 3. So it's 1 over 3. So the point is the numerator, the number on top represents the uh, or denotes the part that you are solving. So we want one third of vector P, Q. So one over three of vector P, Q, vector P, Q, we have it, it's here. So this is 4P, I mean 4Q minus 2P. Then if we expand one over three times 4Q, it's four over three uh, Q minus 1 over 3 times 2p is 2 over 3 vector p. So this is our answer for vector px. Now let's look at o x from o to x. So from o to x we can move from o to p since we have the vector for op. Then plus c. From P to X, we can see that we have the vector for PX. This is the vector, so plus PX. Now, vector OP, we can see we have 2P, and this time we'll just get it the way it is since it's toward the arrow. So we have 2P plus PX, we have it is 4 over 3 of vector Q minus 2 over 3. Of vector p so let's collect the right terms so we have 2 p minus 2 over 3 p here so over 1 plus 4 over 3 of vector q so what is the lowest common denominator for 1 and 3 is 3 so 1 into 3 is 3 times uh, 2 that is 6 p 3 into 3 is 1 times e, negative 2p plus 4 over 3q. Then what is our final answer? 6p minus 2p, we have 4p over 3 plus 4q over 3. So this is our final answer. Now, Away from there, uh, let's look at uh, now Roman number two. Given that OC is equal to H or X, show that. So here we want to prove. So we want to prove that uh, CQ is equal to this vector here. Okay, so the first step that you need to do is let's assume or pretend that we are not given the vector for. For CQ first, we'll begin with this statement here. So the statement is OC is equal to H or X. We have the OX. This is our vector for OX. So H will multiply with C, the vector for OX, which is 4P over 3 plus 4 over 3 of vector Q. So if we multiply, we have OC is equal to 4HP over 3 plus 4HQ over 3. So this is the vector for OC. Now, after we are done finding the vector for OC, let's now show that OC CQ is equal to that vector. So we have CQ. So let's look at how can we move from C to Q. So we want to move from C up to Q. So what do you think are we going to do? So now let's look at we have the vector OC. We have it. Then we also have the vector OQ. So what we are going to, to do is we'll move 
for us to move from C to Q, we'll move from C to O plus C O to Q. Now let's do substitution. Now let, let's look at this one. O C, the vector for O C is this. That is the vector for O C. Now what is the vector for C O? So we can see that T. The, the arrangement of letter Z has been reversed. So therefore, we need to change the sign. So this will be negative 4 over 3 HP minus 4 over 3 HQ plus C. Then the vector from O to Q is just positive for Q. Now, after we've arranged this, let's look at the arrangement. So, we can see that negative 4 over 3 HQ was written at the end. So, we'll do the same. This part here, this part, I mean for the P, this part should be written at the end. So, we'll begin with 4 Q minus 4 over 3 uh, H Q then minus 4 over 3 H P okay now let's look at uh, what they did here so we can see that uh, we are going to factorize here we are 4 even here we are 4 so 4 is common what else is common here we have Q, also here we have Q. So 4 and Q uh, are common. So we are going to write the brackets the way they did. Then if 4 is common, it was written here. Q is common, was written here. Now if we remove 4 and Q, we can see that we, we only have 1 remaining. Minus, we have removed this 4. So we have H over the 3, then uh, what else? Okay, here we are done, minus 4 over 3 HP. So if you can see, this expression is the same as this expression. So we can say now, hence shown. So we have shown how this came. Okay, so now we move on to question 4a. Solve the equation 2x squared is equal to 6x plus 3, giving your answers correct to two decimal places. So we have um, a quadratic equation here. Now, if we look at the way it is arranged, it is not arranged in standard form. So our first step is we need to make sure that uh, our equation is in this order. So ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So this is the way we have to make sure that it is in this order. Then we have um, 2x squared plus 6x here, I mean equal 6x plus three. So for us to form this order, we need to move the 6x to this side and also the three to this side. So if we move the possible 6x to the left side, we make it negative 6x. The 3 will also become negative 3. Then since we have removed this, we have 0 here. So we have it the way we wanted it to be. So we have A, B, and C. Then after you're done, you can now write the quadratic formula. So minus B plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a so what is the value of b the value of b is the coefficient of x raised to the power so it's negative 6 so even here it's negative 6 squared minus 4 the value of a is the coefficient of x squared, which is our 2. Then the value of c, we can see it's negative 3. Then everything divided by 2 times 2. 
So negative times negative is positive 6 plus or minus. Then uh, 6 squared is 36. Then we can see that we have this negative times this negative. So we have positive. Now 4 times 2 is 8 times 3, that is 24 over 4. Then we can proceed from here. So now let's find the sum of 36 and 24. So 36 and 24 will give us, that is 16 over 4. Then we can write the square root of 60. So according to my calculator, square root of 60 is giving me 7.745966692 over <coughs> 4. Then we need to separate these uh, equations into two equations so we have x is equal to 6 so you get the positive party at first then you write everything the way the numbers are or say x is equal to 6 this time you get the negative party so minus 7 Point seven four five uh, five nine six then over four. Then we can now do so six plus seven point seven. We have thirteen point seven four five nine six six nine two divided by 4 so if we divide by 4 we have 3 point 4 3 6 4 9 1 6 now since we are told are uh, correct to two decimal places we just want two numbers after decimal so our final answer is 3 Point four. Now the last number is 3. After 3 we can see that we have 6. So this becomes 4, 4. Let's try the other one. So the other one is 6 minus 7.7459669. 7, then 92. So I'm getting negative 1.7459666 over 4 so if you divide with 4 you get 0. negative 0. 0.4 so to correct to two decimal places we are going to have negative 0 0.44 so that is how we can solve the two values of x using the quadratic formula okay now we move on to question 4b the figure below is a first term of a cone the base diameter and the top diameter are 42 centimeters and 14 centimeters respective uh, while the height is 20 centimeters, take pi as 3.142, uh, calculate its volume. Now for us to find the volume of a first term, we need to find the volume of the, the large cone the knee and the smaller, and after that we need to find the difference. So let's say we want to now extend. So if we are to extend this, this is our big cone. Then the height for this cone we don't have, so we say this is our height here. So we only have the height for, for the first term. So the big cone is the whole cone. This cone is the big cone. Then for smaller cone, this will be treated as the smaller cone. So that is it. 
the picture. So now what are we going to do? So we'll say the height of the smaller cone we don't have, it's now h. Then the height of the larger cone is this x plus 20 because it's the whole uh, distance. So what you do here, we'll say height of the smaller cone divided by height of the uh, big cone is equal to diameter of the smaller cone over diameter of the larger cone. So height of the smaller cone, we are using x over height of the larger cone is x plus c 20. Then diameter of the smaller cone is this distance, uh, 14 centimeters. Over larger cone, we can see that we have 42. So we can now cross multiply. 42 centimeters times x is 42 centimeters x is equal to 14 times x. 14 centimeters x plus c. Then if we multiply 14 times 2, we get that is 280 centimeter times centimeter. So we have this centimeter and this centimeter. So these are the two centimeters you are seeing here. Then from there, we need to collect the like terms. So this will shift to this side giving us 42 centimeters x minus 14 centimeters x is equal to 280 centimeters times 280. So if we subtract 42 minus 14, we get 28 centimeters x is equal to 200. 80 centimeters times centimeter so over 28 centimeter over 28 centimeters so that if we cancel this x we cancel this centimeter and this 28 into 280 will give us 10 centimeters so the height of the smaller cone here we can see that we have 10 so we we'll have 10. So the actual number for the now, I mean for the larger cone should be now 10 plus 20. Now let's also find the same 10. Now let's use radius. So let's say we'll say height of the smaller cone over height of the larger cone. Instead of using diameter, you can also use the radius. Radius of the smaller cone over radius of the larger cone. So height, we said was x, then x plus c, 20 centimeters is equal to. Now, radius, we can see that the circle for the smaller cone has a diameter of 14. So in terms of radius, radius is just the half of the diameter so 14 divided by 2 is 70 centimeters the diameter of the large cone is 42 half of 42 will give us 21 centimeters so we cross multiply 7 uh, 21 centimeters times x is 21 centimeters x is equal to then 7 centimeters times x will give us 7 centimeters x plus 7 times 20 will give us 140 centimeters times centimeters. So we move this to the other side. This will give us 21 centimeters x minus 7 centimeters x is equal to 140 centimeters times another one. So if we subtract 21 minus 7, we have 14 centimeters x is equal to 140 centimeters another centimeter so if we divide by this also here by this we can see that our x will still give us 10 so my point is 
it doesn't matter whether you use diameter or radius the answer is always the same now after we are done finding the height of the smaller cone let's now look at the volume so the volume this time the volume is equal to we we'll say volume of big cone minus volume of small cone so volume of the cone is 1 over 3 pi r squared h so i'm using capital letters to represent the large cone or big cone minus volume of the smaller we have 1 pi r squared d h now let's now do substitution so 1 over 3 pi is 3.142 radius so radius for the large cone is half of 42 which is 21 centimeter times another 21 centimeter now height height is now the whole distance from here up to here so it's 20 plus 10 we get 30 centimeters 1 over 3 3.142 radius for the smaller cone is 7 centimeters times 7 centimeters then height for the smaller cone is just this number so we have 10 so let's see what we can do so we have 3.142 times 21 times another 21 times 30 so I'm getting 41,568.66 centimeters cubed over 3. If we divide by 3, I'm getting 13,856.66. Centimeters cubed. So this is the volume for the big cone. Now let's do for the smaller cone. So it's 3.142 times 7 times 7 times 10. So I'm getting 1539.58 cubic centimeters over 3. So if we divide by 3, I'm getting 513.19 so now let's find our final answer so 13856.22 minus 513.19 getting 13 3 4.03 now we are told that if the, the number is not accurate you round it off to three significant figures so three significant figures you just want one three three so say one three three now since four is less than five we just make it zero so this is our final answer so that is the volume of the first term. Now we move on to question 5a for the geometric progression 20, 5, 1 and 1 over 4, dash dash find the common ratio. So 20 is our first term, 5 is our second term, then 1 or number plus quarter is our third term so the formula for the common ratio is given by r is equal to second term divided by first term then the symbol for common ratio is small letter r now second the term is the number on position number two which is five over our common ratio is just 20 so if we divide five by 20 
so I'm getting 0 0.25 this is my common ratio or if I want I can give it as a fraction so 5 into 5 is 1 5 into 20 will give us 4 now we we'll move on to Roman number 2 any stem so we need to apply the formula for the any stem so tn is equal to a is our first number or our first term r common ratio n minus c one so whenever you are looking for any stem where there is n you don't substitute with anything so it is tn is equal to a is our first term so in our sequence first term is 20 then our common ratio is 0 0.25 then n minus c one so this is our final answer do not multiply 20 and 0 0.25 why 0 0.25 is the only part that is being raised to the power n minus c one now after we are done finding the nth term we can now look at the sum of the first 80 terms so sum sum of the first eight terms so this is z a open brackets one minus c r raised to the power n over one minus r as long as the absolute value of r is less than one so we can see that the common ratio here 0 0.25 is less than one so that is the formula to use okay now let's look at the so sum of how many terms is eight a is our first number 20 1 minus c 0 0.25 raised to the power 8 over 1 minus c 0 0.25 so if we say 0 0.25 raised to the power 8 so I'm getting 1.25 1.52 times 10 to the power negative 5 over 1 minus 0 0.25 is 0 0.75 so let's first simplify the inside brackets so if we subtract this we we'll get negative 0 0.9999984741 over 0 0.75 then we multiply by 20 So negative 19.59999, then 69482, then divide by 0 0.75, 75. So I'm getting negative 2. 6.607 so this is our final answer okay so now we move on to question 5b simplify 14x cubed divided by 9 uh, squared divided by 7x raised to the power 4 over 18y cubed so let's see what we can do we have 14 x raised to the power 3 over 9y squared so this sign here will change to multiplication then we flip the fraction so our 18 will become the numerator 7x raised to the power 4 becomes the denominator from there we can expand so 14 is same as 7 times 2 then for x we have x so x times x times x so because of 3 over 
9 times y times y. Then here 18 is same as 9 times 2 y times y times y over 7 times x times x x times x. So now let's see what we can uh, cancel. So we cancel from here. This 7 is gone here. Then we cancel the x. Okay, so then let's cancel the other diagonal. This 9 goes, this one, this y. Okay, so let's see our final answer. So on top here, we only have two remaining. Over here, we've cancelled everything. So this means we have a one times it from this part. We only have the two and y. So two times y is two y over. From this part here, we only have x. So over x. Then 2 times 2y, 2 times 2y is 4y over 1 times x will just give us x. Now we move on to question 6. Start the flow chart below. We have start, enter, error. Then we have uh, the decision making uh, question is error less than 0. If yes, error, error must be positive. Or else, no, then calculate area is equal to half times r times r times sine q. Then you display area stop. So the question is write a pseudo code corresponding to the flowchart program above. So let's look at the first step. We will start. Then the second here we can see we have enter. So we have enter R. Now here we have the decision making box. Now under flowchart we have a direct question is R less than zero. But uh, when writing a pseudo code, is it, uh, a question like is changes if. So if R less than zero. So we have two uh, answers. There is yes and no. Now we we'll begin with yes. So yes, whenever you want to write yes under the pseudo code, this becomes then. So say then display. So yes corresponds with then display. We have error. Error must be positive then for no we use the language else so else what is coming after no we can see we have this formula so you say area is equal to half times this R times another R times sine Q. Then it will say end if display what we have here area. Then what you do, you stop the program. So this is how we can answer a question like this. So now I'm sure for this paper, this is where we will end, but we'll continue. We'll make, I'll make another video where I'm going to look at some questions from section B. So if you are enjoying uh, this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe and share. So thanks for watching.